What's going on guys, Medicine in 3 Minutes back here with another video and today we're going to be talking about Down Syndrome or in other words, trust me 21. Let's get straight to the point and keep the subject clear, brief and obviously illustrated. So let's get started. So just before we get into the video, uh, I just want to remind you guys that we are going to be using a lot of visuals throughout the video. So uh, be sure to relate those videos to whatever concepts or terms uh, we're trying to get across in the video. Uh, yeah, it's really, really a great tool. Uh, it's a great method of learning and it will definitely help you out if you're ever studying for a test, uh, if you have a quiz coming up or if you ever just want to get a concept or a term across. Definitely uh, use the images and the visuals. They're very helpful. So when we're going to be looking at Down syndrome or trisomy 21, uh, at an early stage when the baby is just a newborn, we can find signs of a decreased tone. Sorry for the typo. Um, so basically, the child is going to be a bit darker, he's going to be less pale, uh, less red than a baby would normally be. That is going to be your first sign. There is going to be oblique palpable fissures. Uh, as you can see here, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the distance is going to be much larger. Um, there's going to be a semi-increase. So in a normal patient, you would find a uh, that this crease would go along and it would kind of just cut off. And it would not reach all the way until uh, the thumb area, this intersection. While a baby with Down syndrome will generally have um, that crease go all the way across and it will eventually collide with that corner. So that's going to be a pretty big indicator. Um, again, you will find big tongue white spots. And we're also going to find uh, these spots called crush field spots going along and around the eyes as you can see here in this pattern. Uh, there also will be likely a moderate mental retardation with speech and gross and fine motor delay. So those will be the main signs at an early age uh, that you're dealing with Down syndrome. So don't forget to use these visuals uh, as we go along with the video. If you ever need to relay the terms to an image or a visual uh, reference definitely use these images and these visuals okay now we when we are dealing with complications there's going to be uh, five general categories that we're going to find uh, complications in now the first is going to be the heart the second is going to be the GI or the gastrointestinal uh, the third is going to be the endocrine the fourth the MSK and five the neuro aspect um, so the first is obviously the heart. Now we are going to find VSD which stands for ventricular septal defect. Uh, that's basically essentially the same thing as endocardial cushion defect. Uh, what this means is that instead of having two ventricles in the heart, it is actually going to be uh, one big ventricle that isn't separated by a barrier. So it's going to be instead of two, one ventricle, one large ventricle. Now uh, the second thing we can find in the GI is going to be uh, Hirschsprung's disease. Now, I uh, will be going into further detail about Hirschsprung disease, but uh, here's a visual of it. Uh, there is going to be intestinal atresia. Um, again, the, I will be going into further detail about it, but uh, it is basically a uh, diadonum atresia, which is a double bubble effect. Um, thirdly, there will be an imperfect anus. Uh, this basically means that the anus will actually instead of creating its own little uh, passageway, it'll actually tend to curve towards uh, the other sexual organs um, and it will find a different passage uh, for secretions. Now lastly is the uh, annular pancreas and this basically will uh, take the pancreas and instead of uh, the pancreas being in a natural spot where it is attached to the uh, intestine, it is actually going to wrap itself completely around it instead of uh, being just right beside it or, or fairly close to being attached to it. Now, for the endocrine, it is actually going to be hypothyroid. Uh, for the MSK, it is uh, adrenoaxial and instability. And for the neuro, it's going to be risk of Alzheimer's. We'll be going into more detail about the Alzheimer's and the risk of Alzheimer's that you have with it. Now, um, for the GI, uh, going again over it, it's going to be Hirschsprung's intestinal atresia, uh, perforate anus, uh, which is obviously going to be the one on the right, and annular pancreas. So just so we get things clear, um, the one on the right is going to be imperfect anus. The one on the left is actually going to be a normal anus. Uh, so yeah, this is the one that you will find with Down syndrome. This is the uh, more typical one or the normal one. Now, 
uh, when we are going to deal with Hirschsprung's disease, it is basically going to be an enlargement of a certain portion of the large intestine. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, a certain part is not necessarily going to be this part, but it's a certain portion of it is going to be enlarged significantly compared to the rest of it. So that is going to be Hirschsprung's disease. And um, endocrine uh, hypothyroidy, uh, you can use this visual for MSK. Uh, you can use this visual and for neuro, which is going to be a risk of Alzheimer's. It is going to be significant uh, drop in acetylcholine and norepinephrine. Now, there's also going to be a linear loss of memory. Uh, you can use this visual right here to remind you of that. And lastly, we're going to be looking at the hematology. So the risk of being affected by an acute uh, lymphoblastic leukemia or ALL, as I uh, showed here, uh, is actually 10 times higher if you're diagnosed with uh, Down syndrome. Now, so I just like to remember um, ALL is basically a form of leukemia. Leukemia is uh, blood cancer. Um, this is a little cancer symbol. Um, hope all. So you could associate hope with cancer. Cancer, uh, obviously leukemia, acute le lymphoblastic leukemia, you can associate it with this little uh, symbol. So yeah. And just before we uh, finish off the video, just want to again remind you guys of Butcher and Gardens in Need of the Pacific. Uh, if you've viewed my videos before, I'm sure you've heard about it. So I won't get into too much detail about it. I don't want to know you guys. But definitely go check out the book. It's a really great book. It's on Amazon, Kobo, Kindle. Uh, it's a really great book. It shows lots of amazing poetry, some really beautiful uh, photography in there. So definitely go check it out if you have time. And it's very cheap as well. So thank you guys so much for watching today's episode of Medicine in 3 Minutes. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. Uh, don't forget to leave your comments, turn on post notifications. Uh, we're dropping new videos every single week. Uh, make sure to leave your feedback if we did anything wrong, anything we can improve upon, anything uh, we can change, anything that we didn't clarify. Really, even just saying hi. If you'd like to leave a comment, definitely leave comments down below. We love your guys' feedback. And if you want to get in touch, yeah, definitely leave comments. So thank you guys so much. Make sure to share this and have a good day.